It is three man rush week seven. Sorry we missed y'all last week. We and we did miss y'all last week. Um, so we have two weeks of games worth to catch up on. I am Spencer, aka Mr. Fantasy. We got Jet Boyer, we got James West in the house as always. It is great to be with you. We've got, as always, three picks from all of the games, and we have our player props, of course. This is three man rush. indeed welcome into three man rush it is great to be with you so we missed week six we had some things going on schedules couldn't line up you know while we're not full time it's hard to sometimes line up these schedules but we are back for week seven so boys before we jump into our week seven picks let's kind of recap what's been happening at least the last two weeks um james how what are your big takeaways from at least last two weeks if any from week five or week six Last two weeks, well, with three man rush picks, I can't get out of this god dang hole. I'm in this effing hole, and I'm finding a way to get up. I'm looking for zero. I'm looking for Shia LaBeouf and holes. I am in one right now, of course, with that. But on top of it, god dang it, how the f did my Eagles lose to the damn Jets last week? God dang it, what the? F yeah, yeah, god. Tyler, can you? How did that happen, Tyler? Because there's a man hailing from the great state of Utah College of BYU. His name is Ass Wilson. He not only slaps that eagle's ass, but he's probably slapped your local MILF's ass too. Number one on the field this week, and he was number one in your mother's bedroom as well. His name is Zach Mother Ethan Wilson. Oh, dear. Prodigy of the broken footed legend himself, Eric Roger. Guided by Gandalf Nathaniel Hack. Wow. I ain't gonna lie, the music was really The touch. Cool. Whoa, whoa, he's doing it again. Oh, <laughs> round two. Got the flair for the dramatics there, Tyler. I guess that answers the question. You're feeling pretty good. Yeah. I mean, let's just be honest with you guys. Like, if you didn't watch, like, the round table, like, it, we got some heated debate about this Jets team. And I was thankfully and very rightfully vindicated by the national media, as weird as that is to say. You had one of the Johnson brothers, and you had freaking uh, who was uh, Brandon Marshall talking, or, or no, Ocho, it was a, no, it was Ocho Cinco. It was Brandon Marshall. Don't want to hear no former Jets like Bart Scott loved. I heard it from Bart Scott. I heard it from. No, mm, no, nope, I've heard nope. it from Brandon Marshall. I've heard it, it was. Uh, it wasn't Brandon Marshall. I've it was Chad it Johnson. And what they said was. As long as Zach Wilson plays ball like this, the Jets can go far with the defense playing the way they're playing and with the run game the way it's running. I, I would not be convinced otherwise. This is a Jets team that if Zach Wilson never in his career has he gone three games in a row without a turnover. It's never happened. He's going into week four of a no turnover game. I'm knocking on this wood. I'm hoping to God it happens. But if it happens that way and does get that game over, I love the chances coming off of this bye. Because I don't know if y'all know this, but we come into a gauntlet of rivalry games. And one thing I do know is that they got freaking Josh Allen's number this year, and by God, they play good in Miami. So I like our chances. I'm just going to say this. Hey, I heard I, – I've seen the heated, heated debate on the round table. And guess what, Tyler? Man, I'm with you. I think the Jets can win eight to ten games, depending on how it falls. I think they can do it. Definitely. Zach can't give it up. He just can't give the ball up. If he gives a ball up, then everything I said is null and void. It doesn't work. But if he doesn't give that ball up, because I'm telling you, James, what do we know about a quarterback that has somebody developing for the first time in his career? What do we know? They get better. And Zach, I'm going to call it. I'm going to make it my own little prop bet. Zach Wilson is going to make the big throws you want. 
by the end of the year, you're going to see him in meaningful games making the big throws to win them, Spence. I will tell you this. It will happen on one of the rivalry games. It will either be New England, it will be Miami, or it will be Buffalo, and he will be making the throws to win the game, not just to let it be a win. It will be to win it on his own. So Spence, just one game. It's just one game. That's it. So one out of Listen, seven. All, I, all I'm willing to do is go go with my neck out on the line for one of the games because we all know that if he does for one of those games, because those are big games, those are teams that historically either going to win the division or New England who has had his number. He's not beaten New England in his career. Those would be big time wins for him. We don't need to rehash everything on Monday. If you haven't seen that episode, please go check out the roundtable from Monday. It was. Just all over the place, just fireworks. But I'm just saying, that's not what you were saying on Monday. <laughs> you were not saying that he was going to do that on Monday. All, In fact, you were adamant that that's not what you were saying on Monday. I just want to remind you of that. Correct. I was not saying that on Monday. I was not saying that on Monday. You were adamant oh. that you were saying the exact yeah. opposite. But now like, you, you, Zach you're... Wilson has not made those throws. He hasn't. He made the throws in the Kansas City game, which they lost. I'm going to have to and, see it. I'm going to have to see it. We're going to have to see it. I just have to feel see like it. I, I don't see like that happening. That I think, and in fact, you mentioned the turnovers. I just think probability states he's going to turn the ball over soon. I think it's coming. Probability hey, also states that Sean White is probably like going to get caught with his hand between his legs again with a masseuse. But you know what? They're hoping for the best. That's an interesting take. I, I You're not entirely wrong there, Tyler. So, it's obviously the big news from week six, but we have a lot of action to talk about for week seven. So, boys, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into this week's picks. James, I'm going to start with you. What is your first lock of the week, baby? As always, as I always get the you know the first pick because I'm always in last place. I think I'm taking off. No, I'm just joking. I'm not taking off the shirt for this pick. Yo, give me the hottest team in the NFC as an underdog. Versus the Ravens. Give me the Lions. Money line. Mm. Slam it to me. Man, I even Slam believe it. Mike Greeny over here, guys. Best best touchdown to interception ratio. Best record since like week six of last year. Holy crap. Imagine if the Lions are 13-3 and three after that. And then they do that this year. Now, of course, for me, you know, of course – when it comes to the road games, you know, it's always going to be a tough one, of course, in Baltimore. I'm not going to lie. As much as I know the Ravens record says they're pretty good, I don't trust the Ravens, man. I just don't. I trust maybe Zay Flowers, but I don't trust anyone else. And, of course, man, I'm with the injury history on on the history with the Ravens and all that, I like, I like the connection between Goff and Mon St. Brown, Williams came back with that bomb. Of course, hey, he had to come back and catch that. So they got to get that timing right when it comes to the deep passes. But I hope Dan Campbell, as we all say in the group chat, give gives the ball. That's all I want to see. Man, I like this Lions team, man, to get the dub in week seven. All right. Hey, you know, I, I don't hate it. I will just say, like, the Ravens are my are my Super Bowl pick, but I think Ooh. this is probably a game they are going to lose because um, I think I think you're right. I think the Lions are on absolute fire right now in fuego for sure. Uh, and Jared Goff, like, I know I you're right. He needs to work on that connection with Jameson Williams. But, dude, I don't know if there's a lot of quarterbacks playing better than Jared Goff right now. No. I, I think – can you name me 10? Oh, no, no. Probably not. I probably couldn't even name Same it. Florida, baby. Yeah, dude. People forget, like, because just because he was cast away from um, the Rams and he was not be able to be successful with Sean McVay, I think people forgot that this was a guy that was a number one overall pick for a reason, right? Like, he's still in the league and Carson Wentz is not. And it was looking like for a while that that was going to be the opposite. But Jared Goff is, is finally looking like that number one overall pick that we kind of thought he was going to be, James. And I wouldn't even say go as far as to say that he looked bad with Sean McVay. I think that you had a team that had Super Bowl aspirations that wanted to win, and he got you there, and he just didn't win it. And I think at a certain point, they didn't think he, they, he could finish the job. But dear God, he got him there. I mean, you saw this man make a Cooper Cup look like an absolute stud himself and Robert Woods. So, 
Yeah. Well, also Nikel Roby Coleman got them there too. And that's true. Know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's for what it's worth. Call, but yeah. that's a fair point. He's got a Super Bowl under his belt. So yeah, I, I like to pick James for for the Lions money line, but don't sleep on my, on the Ravens, man. I got a future on them. So I, I still got them winning the AFC North and coming out of the AFC as as one of my bets. So Tyler, we'll kick it over to you. Go ahead and hit us with your first pick of the week. Man, I like these bucks this year, man. And what better of a whooping to be put on an, another bird? I love the bird beatdowns. It's just really it's my thing right now. Let's beat oh, down another man. bird. Let's this take down a falcon. You know, I, I love it. Let's let's go in there. You get Mike Williams or Mike Evans back. Mike Evans is gonna come in there and gonna take. I think he's gonna get be good for you for two tutties. And I think those Falcons, man. Desmond Ritter lost a home already. He's going to go lose on the road again. They're going to come out three and four because Desmond Ritter, we've said it here on the show, he ain't going to be that quarterback for much longer, boys. Mm -hmm. The Heineke time is coming. Get ready. Get your jerseys out. Get them steamed. Get them pressed because Heineke time comes. I think you're going to see a different Falcons team. And then, then it starts getting a little interesting and a little dangerous. But right now, Desmond Ritter, mm -mm, not on this team. Totally agree, man. No, Ritter, golly. I, I felt like he was point shaving that game last Sunday, man. He just thrown it to the other team on purpose. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to have to look into that because I almost brought him to the electric chair yet this on Sunday because I was wheeling people out of that game. <laughs> now, of course, I, I, I totally agree. I think Heineke is going to obviously be playing maybe in the second half of this game. I like this Bucks team. Of course, I remember the NFC betting show that we had, and I know none of us gave – the Bucks a chance, but mm -mm. man, Baker looks nice with a veteran, you know, wide receiver core and a defense. Yep. You know? It's looking good. Yeah, it's crazy. The thing about that, the Buccaneers, that's just weird to me. Was we remember how great that that defense was whenever they won the Super Bowl? Yeah. They brought a lot of the same personnel back in 2022, and they were one of the worst defenses in the league. They pretty much ran the exact same group out again this year, and they're good again. I, I don't understand it. Um, what's really changed besides a couple of like, you know, I don't think in Dominican Sue's in town anymore. I could be wrong. Jason Pierre Paul's gone. So they, maybe they're just replacing some of the vets with some youth. Maybe that's what's rejuvenated them. I'm not sure. Now, Tyler, let me ask you something. Does the Baker injury ner make you nervous at all? Like if it's Kyle Trask or are you going to be sweating this pick at all? I don't know. I mean, I think that there's something to be said of, uh, Trask sitting behind Brady as long as he did. I mean, we've seen guys that just didn't make any sense as to why they played well. You know, look at Jacoby Brissett. You know, I mean, I'm not going to say Jimmy G. Jimmy G was a higher draft pick, but Jacoby got thrown out there with the Patriots by sitting behind Jimmy and sitting behind Brady. And I uh, remember Matt Castle. Matt Castle, yeah. I mean, I mean, you could make a, a case for any of those guys. Brian Hoyer. Um, <sighs> So, you know, yeah, like if Kyle Trask comes out there, he's got some mobility. We forget that. Like at Florida, like you look, he got got some wheels on him. He could run. I don't know. I think I don't think it's the craziest thing in the world to think they, they could go out there against. I mean, guys, the Falcons aren't very good. They just aren't. So I, I don't know. I mean, tell me, tell me how hard it would be to throw the ball up in the air to freaking Mike Evans and, and company. I mean, it's just not a difficult thing to do because we all know this. Mike Evans is having a fantastic year. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. He's he's aging like wine in the NFL. So my pick for the noon games, um, I'm picking an underdog here, boys. Um, but it's kind of a cheating underdog, I feel like, because I'm picking a division underdog at home. And that is the New York Giants, who sit at 1-5, and five, who are hosting the Washington Commanders at 3-3. Three and three. And here's my thing with this. This is more so a pick against the Commanders. because I do not think they're a good team. I don't. Chase Young is playing well, but Sam Howell, I don't know who he is. This offense is not anything inspiring to watch. And again, it's a divisional game at home, and the Giants are due for a win. And even if Daniel Jones is out of this game, I almost kind of think that'd be good because Tyrod did not look terrible against the Bills, and they damn near beat the Bills on Sunday Night Football. If they can carry that momentum, if they play at the same level that they played on Sunday night against the Bills. I think that translates to a dub against a worse team in the commander. So I'm taking the Giants money line. I think Saquon back again. He's healthier this week. 
He should be able to pound the rock on the commanders and, you know, whatever you get from the quarterback position is a plus. And I think there's some players on that defense that can get after Sam Howell. So give me the line, the uh, almost said the lines. I do like the Lions pick, but give me the Giants at home as dogs. I'm, so, I'm sorry. Like, I want to say, like, I like the pick, but man, I don't know how I could effing. You know, it's crazy. Me and Tyler were like, day ball, Giants week one. Mm-hmm. After that, holy crap. I don't even know how I could even pick the Giants. Yeah, it doesn't look good right now. It this is, this is, it's solely just off of the vibes I got from last week and it being a divisional game, but I like the pick. Here's the thing, guys. I'm really big on the freak commanders this year. I think that they are a good football team. I think that these wide receivers, I think that Rivera's getting these guys hit between him and freaking uh, the enemy. The enemy is... The enemy is finally starting to use Curtis Samuel the way that he needs to be used. I think that that is something we do not need to forget about. Like, even from a fantasy perspective, Spence, if you look at it, his numbers have increased the last three weeks. I don't think that's coincidence. They've looked good the last couple of weeks. I, but actually, I take that back. I think the third week would have been the week that, that uh, Hal threw three interceptions. I could be wrong. But I know from a fantasy perspective on, on Curtis's part, he's looked the part of the past three weeks. So – in saying that as well, you've got Jahan Dotson back there. You also have, obviously, Scary Terry. Brian Robinson has ran they the ball pretty well. They do have a lot of names. And Logan Thompson, can't forget, had Thomas. a great game. Huh? Thomas. Logan Thomas. Sorry. You know, I was due. Wouldn't be a show. So, Go on. It went 16 um, minutes. No. So getting better. Yeah. Getting better. But uh, – <laughs> I just think that people are trying to they're, – they're writing them off. And the defense is playing good. I do not think Sam Howell comes out here and throws less than two touchdowns. So There's no way. I think you see him maybe even go three touchdowns. Sure, I think he might turn the ball over once. But I think Sam Howell, he can sling the ball. And he, as long as – Go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. As long as you've got Scary Terry, Dotson, and friggin' – Curtis Samuel, who I think you're going to see him get a lot more out of the backfield running the ball, I think it's going to look good. I just don't see the same defense that you do because this is the defense that until this week had allowed 30-plus points in every single game since week one. They are getting slaughtered. Their secondary, Emmanuel Forbes, has had a very, very rough rookie year. He's being targeted, being picked on. And again, I'm, I'm not saying I'm a big advocate of Daniel Jones. In fact, I almost feel like I'd feel better in this game if he sits out one more game and Tyrod's in there because I like the way Tyrod played. I know they didn't light up the scoreboard, but they damn near had a chance to win the game as time expired on Sunday night against a good Bills team who, by the way, absolutely slaughtered the commanders in Washington 37-3 to earlier in the season. And just comparing how they've played the last couple weeks, I think the Giants, they've put they've had a little bit more fight than they had to start the season. So it should be a toss-up. That's how divisional games always are. But I just like the vibes of the Giants this week. So I'll I go think, ahead and I'll go ahead. Go ahead. I think one of the things though, like to note is like you're you're right. I think the backfield's getting picked on, but I think that the fact that that line is playing so well that if you're bullying opposing offensive lines, it's it's a lot it, it really doesn't matter if you have no pocket. Right. Yeah. And I think just, that's where they're winning. We just haven't seen that in a while from them. They did have a good game in Atlanta against the Falcons, but hey, y'all said it yourselves. It's, it's a Falcons. lot to do with Desmond Howard. Howard. The Falcons are not a very good team. So I'll take the under with the Giants and Commanders. That's not a bad pick. Unders in divisional games are usually a good pick. Yeah. So moving on, I'll go ahead and take this next one because I'm going to advocate for my boys, and I'm going to take the Packers. <laughs> I'm going to take – my yeah if you didn't know this if you didn't hear me remind you the last six weeks i am a packers owner all right so um they are hosting i'm sorry they're on the road in denver and look man this is simple denver is bad that is a cesspool of garbage right now that we are seeing in the mile high city with tyler's favorite head coach sean payton at the helm they sure have righted the ship (laughs) tyler so i think the packers not looking too good the last few games. They're coming off of a bye. Matt LaFleur, I think, is a great head coach. I think he's a very, very good head coach. I have to assume that he made adjustments during the bye week, that he's going to figure some things out. The offense will get clicking. We know that defense is very solid. 
I don't think Russ stands a chance against that defense. Things are only going to get worse for the Broncos, and I think it continues this week. Give me my pack, and they're one-point favorites on the road. Give me that game. I'm not going to lie. I, I I like the pick, actually. Um, I know for me, if if it was anyone else besides the damn bro, I probably would pick the home team, but I'm not going to lie. You know what I'm waiting for? I'm waiting for Sean Payton to get on that press conference and say, Dear Nathaniel Hackett, I am sorry for the choice of words I used. Yeah. And I, I said you did a horrible job, but now I have either the same or ho- worse record than you did. It's at worse. This time. It's worse. Hackett was two and four at this time. Peyton is one and five. Yeah. That, so, that's what I want. That's what I want to see. Cause... Good on you, buddy. Good job. Yeah, I think I, I think we're gonna be holding our breath sure. forever for that apology apology because uh he had a chance to after the Jets game. And uh, I think uh Tyler, I don't think he said Whoosh. anything. Whoosh. Nah, he just took that ass whooping, you know what I mean? <laughs> yes, indeed he did. So uh, I'm going Packers there. Tyler, why don't you give us your second pick? Yeah, so I also like to pick, though, just before I get into that, I think that one thing we're going to see is I think you're going to see Matt finally feed Romeo Dobbs more. I think that that is, yes, he's been getting the ball, but I think it's been inconsistent. And I think as they have Jordan Love feed him the ball, I think good things happen. When Dobbs has the ball in his hand, good things happen. What I mean, freaking Christian Watson just has not looked – the same guy that he was last year, man. He was a project before, and he was he's still a project. He just looked better because Aaron Rodgers was throwing on the ball. Let's be honest, guys. So give me some more Romeo Dobbs, and I'm going to feel a lot better about this team. But my pick is going to be, in my opinion, the most underlooked team in football this year. Give me the Los Angeles Rams over the Pittsburgh Steelers at home. Man. I love me this offense right now, guys. I love me some Puka. No, cool. Some Puka. Puka. I love me some Koopa Cup. Some Koopa Cup. Puka in the Koopa Cup. And I love the Pittsburgh Steelers defense and how they are allowing teams to score at will. That's not a so, thing, yeah. Whatever the over is on this game, you freaking hammer it. Because I think that Stafford's coming out here, McVay's ready to party. <laughs> and I think that this game is going to be high scoring. And I'm also, Spence going to go and hit my prop pick since we're on this game. Oh. Give me Cooper Cup anytime touchdown. Mm, I like that. That's a good prop. I it's like a great that. A lot. Prop. He's been due and uh, he got one last week. And that's how he's been in his entire career. When he gets hot and he just, every single week, you can count on him. Let's ride the wave, baby. Get me on that coop wave. White so, boys can jump and white boys can catch. So over under yeah. is 44. I'll take well, you know what I won't do? That's a pretty low over. I think I like the over there. So for me, I, I would like the over too. I guess what I would go for is the Rams team total because I would hate to have like a Texans type of game where you drop 30, but the Steelers only score six points and it's like that's fair. But yeah, I do I still love this think Kenny Pickett, now. though. I think Kenny Pickett can get the distribute the ball, and I think that he's starting to play a little bit better. The problem is going to be the ineffectiveness of, of, of Najee Harris this year. Is that is that God. going to hurt it? You know what I mean? Concrete feet, dude. Concrete. I mean, good lord, guys. So I think, yeah, I mean, that's a tough one because I I, I don't know. I, I just but I like I like the Rams pick, like you mentioned. It. Is I don't know what it is actually about them. And I'll even throw the Cardinals out there, like teams that we just thought that weren't going to be good, but they're mm-hmm. either like for, but at least the Rams are racking up dubs though. They're yeah. playing teams very competitively, like the Eagles and the Bengals. Um, dude, yeah, this team, this team is good. I would love to see what they do in the tread trade deadline to maybe see if they can get that seventh spot in the wild card. Yeah. I think Ooh. there's categories of teams in the NFL, like, there's categories of teams where they're bad, but they're good because they're feisty and they are, they're going to make you earn a win against them. I put teams like my Texans in that category where oh, yeah. I don't think they're contending for anything serious, but any team that plays them is going to have to come and earn it. They're not going to give you anything easy, right? I, I don't think the Rams are in that category. I think the Rams are just straight up a good team. I do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But they've had a tough schedule. 
they did get humbled by the Eagles, but I think that's a team that they are objectively worse than, but we have a lot of season to go and maybe they make some moves. Who knows? I, well, they don't have any, many picks. I don't know. No, they don't have no picks. <laughs> they seem no. to always lose all their picks, but nonetheless, I think the, I love the pick of the Rams and I, I think the Steelers are the worst three and two team in NFL history. It makes no sense that they're three and two. I agree. Yeah. It must be that uh, it must be that Tomlin magic trying to keep Tomlin them. Effect. He just refuses to have a losing season. So. How's how's this though, guys? For something that we didn't haven't even probably even thought about, but you know, Kyron Williams has been great, but he's hurt. How about this Rams team coming out and maybe racking up a few games, getting some surprises, and then at the trade deadline, maybe you see Derrick Henry go to the Rams. That oh would be really God. interesting. That Dude. would be scary. And I, and you know, honestly, it might not take that much to do it because he's a running nope. back. Mm -mm. We don't care about running backs in the NFL, oh, as we no. know. So, so, James, bring us home with your next pick. Oh, man. So, I got another underdog with me. Now, of course, I thought, you know, I thought the 49ers were going to beat the P.J. Walker Browns. But I guess that didn't happen. I know the Browns defense is pretty legit. And I don't know how I'm picking this, but I am believing in Gardner Minshew. Give me the Colts plus two and a half. Wow. Give me the money line over the Browns. Okay, I know Gardner Minshew played like crap against the Jaguars. He was one of my worst picks of the week last week. But I've always, I've always loved me some Gardner Minshew, and I, I think he actually. Now I'm not saying he's a better athlete than Anthony Richardson, but I love him in this system with Steichen. And I think, man, I, I, I don't know. Like I said, I don't know how the Browns even beat the 49ers, <laughs> but man, there's no way PJ Walker is going to and oh this season. Just can't mm, actually happen. like that, man. I really like that pick. Cause I think people forget Carter Minshew was, a, a guy that Eve, like when Rodgers went down, the people were saying that the Jets should go trade for because you know at least you're going to get some stability. This is a stability guy, like on this team. He was brought in to help kind of you know mentor Richardson because Minshew just shows up. Do you guys remember whenever he was on the Jaguars and like I think it was the Nick Foles year when Nick Foles went mm -hmm. down? It was like holy crap, who's this Minshew guy out here gunslinging? From and I mean, Washington he kind of hasn't State? stopped. Mm -hmm. He has it. It's just he's one of those guys I think where no one's ever really given him a shot, right? Like, do we think that the drop off between Gardner Minshew and Taylor Heineke is really that much different? No. I would I would at least give Gardner Minshew the title of being the best backup in the league. Taylor Heineke's definitely up there, but yeah, yeah, no, I think you're right. I don't think there's any drop off at all. Another and we're looking at Taylor Heineke as a guy to, to to start over, and we think that a team would play better with him. So I mean, I I don't know. Maybe that's something we're saying something there to Gardner Minshew's credit. And another point that I I forgot, man. I I, I don't know about you. How how did y'all feel, man, when John Taylor got his deal that three year forty two million? And then the dams that Sunday, Zach Moss say, yeah, let me carry this team. Let me show you who you need to pay. And just dog they paid, they paid Jonathan Taylor $42 million over three <laughs> years just to say, all right, you're paid now. Get ready to be in a committee. And now him and Zach Moss, who all credit to Zach Moss, who someone I think a lot of people cast off and he was a throw in in a trade last year and, He's never looked like anything. In fact, I think I've called him a jag before, you know, AD even started. I think I got to be honest here and think I thought he was a jag. I like Zach Moss, guys. He's a good player, man. He is balling out for them and they have commit they have really developed a good two-headed monster there. I don't see how you go away from it if it's working. Mm -hmm. Spence, this is something that I, that we kind of talked about though that I had mentioned was and I've said it a few times when they traded him high and I thought they just traded for the same player. Because they do the same things. I didn't think there was anything different between Zach Moss and Neam Hines. Don't at all. But you know what the difference is? One of them's in the league still. The other one's not. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think Zach Moss is a clearly a better runner. And um, I mean, yeah. All Naheem Hines was good for just dump offs. And I guess Zach Moss just, he, he's improved as a player. There's no doubt about it. So I love that pick, James. All right. Um, Tyler, third picks. Third round. Let's have you start this one. All right. So, man, I know that maybe some people had lost some belief, but I'm not losing the belief because this is my Super Bowl pick. And give me the San Francisco 
49ers against the failing Minnesota Vikings on the road. I think the 49ers are upset. I think they're pissed off. I think Bosa and company are ready to wreak absolute havoc. And I feel sorry for the Minnesota Vikings and what's about to happen at their home. It will be yellow tape galore because, guys, there's going to be a freaking murder scene for Kirk Cousins, unfortunately, because I think Bosa is going to go insane. Whoa, 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 whoa. This is a family show, man. (laughs) But I like the pick. (laughs) So I'm going to tell you something, Tyler. I'm not going to pick the Vikings to win, but – they're going to cover minus seven. I really think that because here's the thing. And, and this is what I'm and it's kind of cheap what I'm going to base it off of. But if Christian McCaffrey and Debo Samuel do not play in this game, I think we might have seen behind the curtain on who Brock Purdy might actually be. We all set up here, myself included, Tyler, and we all bought in on him as a top 10 guy. And that was when he had a full, healthy onslaught of weapons. He had a healthy defense. They were rolling everybody that they played. One game that he loses his top option on in, as a wideout, eh, debatable with him and IU, but historically Debo has been the number one guy there, and you lose yeah. the best weapon in all of football in Christian McCaffrey. Oh, yeah. And all of a sudden, that offense imploded on themselves against an objectively good Cleveland defense nonetheless, but they've just dropped 40 on just as good of a defense in Dallas. What's the difference here? I think the health of his weapons matter. So I think I like I like your pick if all those guys are healthy. But if they're not healthy, I have an eyebrow raise because I've seen Kirk Cousins before. When a lot of people doubt him, he ends up somehow putting something together. Then again, yep. now that I say that, it's prime, prime time, time Kirk. Kirk. Prime time Kirk. Oh no. Yeah. Yeah, well, maybe I'm not gonna put that in my parlay, but I will probably bet that one. I'm not gonna so, put it in my parlay though. This yeah. is my rebuttal. I'm going to double down on, on Brock Purdy because I do believe in him, and I do believe history repeats itself. I'm not saying that he's Tom Brady, but I am going to say that I think that history likes to throw us some guys that have forgotten about, and they turn into stars. And I do think he's a top-10 quarterback in this league. I'm going to stand by it, and I think that you're going to start seeing Purdy maybe run around a little bit more, use his legs a little bit. And I think that you're going to see him move outside of the pocket and throw that ball. And I stand by my statement. Kyle Shanahan is one of the top three greatest coaches in the NFL right now. I think there is maybe – you can make a case, I think, for two. I would put him at number two. I think the only guy, in my opinion, that better than him is Andy Reid. I think that's it. And I think I, that he's going to okay show you that. why. I'm definitely okay with that. I think he's going to show you why. Because here's the deal, guys. If, if you can't throw the ball – and we know we already got primetime Kurt working against you because he's freaking running for his life. What do we know about Kirk? He ain't mobile. Kirk ain't mobile no more, boys. And in that defense, they added uh, oh, what's it, Gregory from uh, from the Broncos here recently when they wow. made that trade. We have got to, like, where are your holes on defense, guys? There's none. And yeah. And what do we also know about this freaking Vikings team? It's not getting better. It's no. getting worse. So maybe we see the implosion fully happen for the Vikings in this game. I won't lie. I think you swayed me. I think I'm staying away from this game. <laughs> I think I'm staying away from this game, Tyler. I'm not going to lie. I'll, Only I'll, because, I'll, like, I'll slam, I'll slam the minus seven. I, man, that the, the Vikings defense is terrible. It's so, it's so, it's so, it's so bad. bad. It's so bad. So, so bad. yeah, you know, that's, that's a good pick, Tyler. You, you swayed me. I'm, I'm keeping that game out of my bets this week and that's just i'm not going to touch it one game i am going to touch though i'm going to go and take my pick james i want to give you the floor for your pick i think you're gonna i think you need the floor for the final pick but i'm going to go next because i cannot believe the nfl sports back uh, the sports book people that set the lines that they have the audacity after what happened this past week to make the saints the home fair favorites oh my god on thursday night football with a red hot jacksonville jaguars team coming into town shout out ham bone the jaguars being a one point underdog i'm hammering that i'm gonna put a lot of units on that trevor lawrence is gonna come into town cook what i think is a very overrated defense i watched nico collins completely dust 
Marshawn yes. Lattimore all day long. Tyler, we were at that game. We were watching. He was getting open, and he was, sometimes he wasn't getting the ball, but he was. We thought that wasn't going to happen. Yeah. We thought that wasn't going to happen. We both came into that game thinking my anytime touchdown was not going to happen. We both were like, even though it didn't happen, we're like, man, this this might not be bad. Came close a couple of times, but he still put up a very productive day. I don't believe in that defense very much, and y'all know how I feel about Derek Carr. One of the worst quarterbacks of the last two or three years is Derek Carr. I cannot fathom why they paid him as much as they Great. did for the season. So – I don't think there's anything that's going to be different. There's nothing that's going to surprise me except for the fact that they made this line what it is. But I'm happy to take it to the bank. Give me the Jags outright. Money line, it's going to be hitting tomorrow night. Go make your money. Put the mortgage on it. Yo, not yo, 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 we got, yo, we got some underdogs over here, Spence, man. Shoot, we going for this one. I'm not going to lie. I'm totally with you on that. I have the Jags plus one and a half. I think the – and not just the game against the Texans. The game against the Packers, the game against the Titans, the game the against Bucks. the Bucks. Like they're not a good team. They're they're not a good team. This offense. I mean, hey, you saw the meme. <laughs> <laughs> like what the, f- dude? It's just one of those things. And I'm with you, man. I, I like the Jags. I think their offense, you know, with weapons now. Of course, I know the knee injury with Trevor Lawrence is a little shaky, but he said he's gonna go play. So I believe. I believe this is a low scoring game though, because I just don't see the Saints even scoring like 17 points in general. So give me give me 20, give me 20 to like 10 Jags. Yeah. I think it's it's Thursday night game. We know those games can get real ugly, but I just know one thing, and it's a Saints game too. And that's the that's the key for me. The Saints are just they're not a good team, and I think they're gonna remind us of that on Thursday night. Mm-hmm. Definitely. So, James, final pick before we get into our player props. What you got? Guys, I can't believe, man, I was leaving work on a Sunday. My team was up 14-3. to I was ready to rag on the freaking 49ers and Cowboys. I was ready. And then and then my guy, Mr. Jalen Hurts, that man from Channel View, Texas, <laughs> oh, no. decided to play one of his worst games ever. He's – God, my guy is playing like he's on that rookie second round draft pick. Like he's looking like how he did under Wentz, and then the year he started when we went like nine and eight and lost to the Bucks. He's holding on to the ball way too long. He's thrown already seven picks this year. He's he threw six last year. Guys, give oh me the, my! Give me the damn Eagles! Yeah. Give me the Eagle. E-A-G-L-E-S. Eagle. Oh my gosh. You think you think I'm freaking worried about god dang Tua Tunga V Lagga Loa Loga Bugga Bugga? You think I'm worried about Tyreek backflipping hill? You think I'm worried about waddle 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 like this is happy feet? What? God dang it. No. You know why? Because when people come in the Lincoln Financial Field, they do not win. They don't win. Now, of course, yes, the commanders put us on the ropes. But who gives a f- man? <laughs> Jalen Hurts, get it together. Brian Johnson, get it together. Yo. Yo. All I know is, hey, Darius Slay and Jalen Carter, please come back, though. Please come back <laughs> because, God dang, if y'all don't come back, hell, I'm going to be a little worried about this pick. But give me Eagles money line. Go Jalen Hurts. Go, God dang, De- DeAndre Swift. Go Devontae Smith. <laughs> hey, Devontae Smith, start catching the ball, man. You don't out there looking like Nelson Aguilar, man. Catch that goddamn thing <laughs> next time. Goddamn. All right, James, over under at 51. How do you feel about that? So, of course, so, of course, no bull crap. I look at the – in my head, I'm like, it's over all day. You know, you're thinking about the thinking about the Dolphins. You're thinking about this, thinking about that. But then I think about how the Eagles can – how I thought they would have played against the Jets, but how they played against the Rams where they held those scoring touchdown possessions where they're going 14 plays, eight, nine-minute drives. And I feel like that's going to be the game plan this week because, of course, you don't want to shoot out with – you don't want to shoot out with, you know, Tua and the Dolphins. I'm I'm just going to be honest. Yeah, I don't want that because, God dang, I know the Eagles can score on the Dolphins, but, man, if we don't have big play slay, if we don't have blanker shift in the freaking – Safety. If we don't have Jalen Carter making those pressures, 
guys, man, we are in for a long day. And, of course, not on top of that, the reason why I'm pissed off even about that Jets loss is because the next stretch of games that I know and everyone's seen where we got Dolphins, Commanders, Bills, Niners, Cowboys. Like, kid you not, we needed that dub, hey, man, because the 6-0 and and going, let's say, the 4-3 and the next seven – is a lot easier than fighting for that first place seat. But fly, mother eagles, fly. <laughs> Let's go, Jalen. Let's go, Jalen. Let's go, Jalen. And hey, of course, I... the Kelly Greens are being presented Sunday night. Mm. Let's freaking go. You I understand think- it. You All made right. a good case, but you really sold me whenever you reminded me about those Kelly Greens. Ain't no way they lose in the Kelly no Greens, way. bruh. No way, man. No way, man. I like it. Matter of fact, I will be wearing my Kelly Green this Sunday. You got to, bro. Guys, so, I, I'm, go ahead, Tyler. Unfortunately. Oh, hey, hey, hold up, guys. Before hey, you want to see something more funny? Oh God, I'm nervous. You can show me one of the Eagles picks. If Jalen don't want to play. If Jalen don't want to play, oh my God, you are! <laughs> Boy, give me the Dolphins plus oh two and a half. Oh my God, dude! <laughs> I think so. Okay, your pick's still the Eagles. My pick is still the Eagles. But we're we're rocking the Dolphins jersey now. I I I like it, James. It's, um, the duality of James West is just immaculate. Guys, I want nothing to do with this game. I want nothing to do with it. Because I think Jalen Jalen Hurts struggled with Brandon Eccles, Michael Carter the second, and Tony Adams. Number th- freaking three, four, and five on the roster. I think that AJ Brown struggled to get open, and Jalen did not like pressure. I think one thing that Nick that that Fangio is going to do is I think J- freaking Ramsey is going to be all over AJ Brown. That's true. Possibly and I, back. he could be back. He could be back. Oh man, I just figured he was coming back in December. I expect him to come back and I expect him to prove a point. And then I don't expect him to win this game. <laughs> Dude, it's hey the way the way the Eagles been playing. Trust me, I wouldn't I wouldn't want to say either. We'll the see. I hope, the one thing I hope what Brian Johnson does. I don't know if you um remember because I know y'all were at the Texans game, but that first drive where the Eagles scored the touchdown, it was the play where it looked like a goddamn triple option, and then all of a sudden Boston Scott was open, and it would end up being like a thirty yard pass. If Brian Johnson can draw up those type of plays, sort of kind of how like Steichen did with those RPOs to where Goddard's open, because that's the biggest thing that's killing us is we're not doing the RPOs as well as we did last year. And it's proven nope. because Steichen is obviously a better play caller than Brian Johnson. You know why? Never was an offensive coordinator. He was just a quarterback's coach. So it's coming to show, but, man. Sirianni's a fraud, bro. That's why. Oh. Damn. Hold up. Sirianni a fraud. Now, of course, you could say, yeah, he might have had a better offense under Steichen, but until I see a – if the Eagles go 12-5, and 13-4, and four, ain't nobody no fraud. I'm just kidding. I just don't like Sirianni. <laughs> I, will say, I will say Sirianni has a punchable face. I will be Dude, <laughs> I will give you that. I feel I like Sirianni – okay, this is my deal with Sirianni. I feel like he's that guy that, like, takes credit for other people's accomplishments and acts like he's, like, so great when really it's freaking Steichen's the reason why his offense was so incredible and he's over here acting like, eh, it's fine, it's just as good. It's like, homie, you just lost to the Jets, bro. Damn. Freaking oh. three, four, and five backfield. And we've said it on this show a lot, like all all year. James, you've you've agreed too. Like they've been winning games ugly. ugly. Like they hadn't looked besides the Rams game, which is ironic. Like I finally decided to pick against them, and it was the best they've looked all year. But outside mm-hmm. of the Rams game, they haven't done like much to really establish themselves as like the most dominant force in the league besides their record. Um, so yeah, now. Tyler, you said you want nothing to do with this game. I'm with you as far as my betting picks, but 
it's going to be real hard. The Astros are scheduled to be playing on Sunday. Oh, night. you don't want to watch it, dude. I'm going to be tempted. Football is always going to have my heart. I think mm -hmm. I might have to like double screen this thing, man. You, gotta, like, you don't want to bet on this. You definitely don't want to bet on this game. But you got to watch because oh, it's got to watch it. Fireworks and, and, and Eagles. I, money, I, money. I will say this too, man. Like I've only got like 15 hours this week, so it's not much. <laughs> I just, I just have this feeling, bro. Like, did we believe in Sirianni? Like when you came in, like, did you believe in him? Like, did you think Sirianni oh, was like, going to be that guy? So I'm not going to front with you. Obviously, I wanted Eric Bieniemy um, when we were hiring, I I and then when we got Nick Sirianni, it's like it's kind of like you know one of those deals where it's like I've never seen you play, I've never heard you coach anyone else. And then, of course, the first year, you know, yeah, man, I mean, we looked decent. We were like 500, and then we ended up understanding how to play with Jalen. Of course, that first year, yeah, we, we got spanked by the, by the Bucks because, you know, Jalen Hurts is not that good of a thrower. And then last year with Steichen and their work, you could see, you could see Jalen throwing that ball, you know, with more force down there because this year and two years ago, he's throwing the ball with a lot of F and A. Right, bro. And yeah. Every unless unless Brown's gonna catch all the balls, he's gonna get picked off. And right now, like I said, it's really it's really Brian Johnson. Now, of course, I know Lane Johnson, our right tackle, got hurt. He'll probably not play this week. If he does, hoorah, superhero him. But <laughs> I, I know Stephen A. Smith pulled up the stats. You know, Jalen Hurts three and seven when he's pressured over forty percent. And I'm not gonna lie, I think. On top of it, I think Jalen at the moment he's scared to get hit right now. Like you know what I think that is though? I don't think he's scared to get hit. I think and, and Spence, we talked about this a little bit off camera. I think that AJ Brown situation is actually starting to like boil. Hurt like I do because like, he didn't. If they did not look on sync in the Jets game, like because because like in, in all due respect, like I mean the guy did get over hundred yards, but like hundred and twenty. Don't, 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 don't say hundred. Don't 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 screw my man. He don't don't good. screw that man from Ole Miss. So the pro the thing is, it's like he wasn't. It wasn't like he wasn't getting separation. Separation. It was like they weren't on sync. Like he wasn't able to be found like he was last year. And okay. the only difference I see is that they're all getting hot and bothered against each other. And AJ Brown kind of getting a little diva and looking kind of like AJ Brown from Tennessee. If you know what you I'm know saying. what this also looks like to me. To's second year. Freaking first year we're in the Super Bowl, mm. yada yada, mm. lovely. Second year, my man's out there doing crunches on ESPN. Oh my, that's actually a very good take. I like that. That's a it very is. good. Uh, that's a very good comparison. <laughs> that's definitely history repeating itself right there. So, I uh, yeah, I think Sunday night's definitely going to be the game of the week. It's I'm glad it's going to be Sunday night football with Carrie Underwood, Mike Tirico, and the gang. Mm -hmm. It's going to be fun. So, boys, let's rattle off our prop picks for the week. And I'm going to flex this real quick. I remain undefeated. I've hit all six of my player props on the season. I'm in all he wants. You're going to listen to this prop pick. How about the best receiver in football right now? And I'm not talking about A.J. Brown, who we just talked about. I'm not talking about no... Jamar Chase, the injured Justin Jefferson. There has not been a better wide receiver in football in 2023 than Stephon Diggs. So, again, another problem with sports books setting lines really stupid. I'm finding you out, Vegas. I'm on you. You're setting the line for Stephon Diggs at 84 and a half, and I'm hammering the over. He has only not eclipsed that amount every single game except for one this season. He's eclipsed 100 yards every single game this season except for one game in which he got 60. I feel very good about him doing that. The only worry I'd have would be Bill Belichick is known for taking care of the top weapon on an offense, but I don't care. Who are they going to have in that horrible defense, that horrible team they have in New England this year that's going to stop Stephon Diggs? The answer is nobody hammering the over of 84 and a half. It feels like a gimme, guys. Guys, I'm not gonna lie. This one's a, this one is tough for me. This this one might be a stretch. I'm gonna go Isaiah Pacheco under 16 and a half rushing attempts. Now, if we go by the under 16 and a half number, the half he's only done that once this year. 
But the last two, last three games, 20 care. No, yeah. Last four games, 15 carries, 20 carries, 16 and 16. This is a stretch for me. But give me the under 16 and a half. I feel like he'll be more of a receiver against the Chargers. You always know this Chargers Chiefs game is always airing it out to someone. It's going to be Kelsey. It's going to be Pacheco. It might even be that new acquired receiver, McCall Hardman. Maybe he might come back from the depth. <laughs> but give me the under 16 and a half rushing attempt. Hey guys, we talked about on already, but give me the super free, give me white lightning, give me that boy Cooper Cup. He is going to be due for an anytime TD against this horrendous Steelers secondary. I think it's going to be nice. I think it's going to be delicious. I think you're going to see two receivers go over 100 yards when him and Puka. It's going to be a good game, and it is going to be a beat down in LA. I like it. All righty, y'all. So. Those are all of our picks for week number seven. Guys, I don't mean to make you sad, but we are already a third of the way through the regular season. So that means we have a lot of action left and we have a lot of time left for y'all to catch up to me. So until next week. Hold on. We forgot something. (gasps) Do not forget. AD got the merch. Got we actually got one more oh, thing, no. actually. I'd be remiss if I forgot this one. James, what games are we watching on YouTube oh. NFL Sunday Ticket? What are what games are we keeping an eye out for? Oh, man. You already know. Yes, the Sunday Ticket, man. Woo, woo. I am so excited. Now, of course, man, if you eliminate the primetime games, gosh, this slate is horrible, in my opinion. So first, give me Lions and Ravens. We think this is the best team in the NFC, and we think this may be the best team in the AFC North. Clashing, I think, A, got to be the easiest, number one. Number two, hey, you mentioned it, Tyler. We want to see Taylor Heineke. So come on, Bucks. I want you to whip on the Falcons in the first half and bring us this quarterback of the Falcons' future for just the rest of the season. So give me that game number two. Number three. Man, I love me to see Sean Payton go one and six. So I'm watching the Packers. I'm because I believed in Jordan Love in the preseason, and he hasn't been looking too good on the road. But please change my mind, Matt Lafleur. Come up with that good game plan. And obviously, as I mentioned, if we're not doing none of the prime times, yo, I need, I need to see PJ Walker lose to Gardner Minshew. So those are the four games of the week I'm watching. Right on. Rock and roll. All righty, y'all. Well, that has been week seven's edition of Three Man Rush. We will see you next week. And in the meantime, enjoy the games.